I'm claiming that in this circle there is a greater number of red dots than of blue dots. Do you agree? Are you sure? If you agree, then you are wrong, there is more of blue dots. But that was cheating, right? Imagine that in this example you are representing a person who is already convinced that there is more of red dots than of blue dots. Because some time ago, this person has seen just a fragment of this circle, didn't realize that this is only a fragment, and concluded that there is more of red dots. I was representing a mind of such person, and by doing this, I did what a mind of someone who is convinced that there is more of red dots does. To explain why such a thing can happen, we have to look at cognitive biases. Cognitive biases are errors in human thinking, perception, interpretation and judgments that make thinking irrational and cause people to reach incorrect conclusions, even if it's possible for them to reach correct conclusions. Errors known as cognitive biases result from specific reasons, like limited human capacity for information processing, motivated reasoning, cognitive dissonance, judgment heuristics or naive realism. In the previous videos, I've talked about motivated reasoning, cognitive dissonance and the judgment heuristics. Here I will explain briefly what the so-called naive realism is. Naive realism, psychological naive realism to be more specific, because there also exists philosophical naive realism, is a certain set of convictions that humans have about their own perception of reality. These convictions have been described by psychologists Lee Ross and Andrew Ward in such first-person terms. First, that I see entities and events as they are in objective reality and that my social attitudes, beliefs, preferences, priorities and the like follow from a relatively dispassionate, unbiased and essentially unmediated apprehension of the information or evidence at hand. Second, that other rational social perceivers generally will share my reactions, behaviors and opinions, provided that they have had access to the same information that gave rise to my views, and provided that they too have processed that information in a reasonably thoughtful and open-minded fashion. Third, that the failure of a given individual or group to share my views arises from one of the three possible sources. A. The individual or group in question may have been exposed to a different sample of information than I was, in which case, provided that the other party is reasonable and open-minded, the sharing or pooling of information should lead us to reach agreement. b. The individual or group in question may be lazy, irrational, or otherwise unable or unwilling to proceed in a normative fashion from objective evidence to reasonable conclusions. Or c. The individual or group in question may be biased, either in interpreting the evidence or in proceeding from evidence to conclusions, by ideology, self-interest or some other distorting personal influence. There are many cognitive biases. One of the most important and ever-present cognitive biases is the confirmation bias. Confirmation bias should not be a feature of reasoning conducted by scientists. Scientists should consider all evidence, even if it disconfirms their hypothesis. They have to be ready to abandon a hypothesis that was disconfirmed by evidence and form a new one. Confirmation bias is a feature of normal day-to-day -day human reasoning. It causes people to prefer information that confirms what they already know. Information that confirms their assumptions, convictions, beliefs, opinions and the like. Imagine a sports fan who is watching a match of his national team. The main referee of the match is from a country that is in a serious political conflict with the fan's country. The fan assumes that the referee will be making decisions unfavorable to his team. So, throughout the match, he is paying close attention to every decision that is unfavorable to his team. He is treating every such decision in situations that are not fully clear as a confirmation of his assumptions. He is not paying too much attention to decisions that are favorable to his team. He is not noticing that the number of controversial decisions unfavorable to his team is similar to the number of controversial decisions favorable to his team. This is a biased information gathering. Greater attention is given to information that confirms prior assumptions. If after the match someone observes that the referee was poor in general and had controversial decisions unfavorable to both teams, then the fan will say that the referee probably just wanted to appear unbiased. This is a biased information interpretation. Information is interpreted to confirm prior assumptions. 
After the match, the fan is able to recall more decisions unfavorable to his team than favorable. This is a biased information recall. Information that confirms prior assumptions is recalled more easily than this confirming information. There exists a bias, closely related to the confirmation bias, called disconfirmation bias. It causes people to approach information that disconfirms their prior assumptions more critically than information that confirms them. For example, if statistics confirm what we think, then there is no need to criticize it. But when it disconfirms what we think, then it's incorrect and it must have been done badly, done by an institution that is not objective and not trustworthy. Confirmation bias manipulates our thinking in many ways, in many areas of life. For example, when we are given a description of someone whom we don't know, then when we later meet them, we will be looking for aspects of their behavior that confirms this description. When we form beliefs about other individuals' behavior based on some information, those beliefs can remain even after learning that the information were wrong. It's because after having formed the belief, we may look for and find other information that can confirm the belief. Confirmation bias can be a reason why the phrasing of a question can influence the answer by prompting people to search their memory for information that confirms the hypothesis contained in the question. For example, a question, are you satisfied with your job, may make us look for and find memories that confirm that we are satisfied with our job. A question, are you dissatisfied with your job, may make us look for and find memories that confirm that we are dissatisfied with our job. Thanks to confirmation bias, hypochondriacs are able to find signals in their body that can be interpreted as symptoms of some illness. Confirmation bias may be a reason why ineffective medical treatments had been able to survive for so long throughout history. Sometimes people may get better even after being treated by ineffective treatment. People notice and remember those instances, but do not pay attention to instances where recovery happened without the treatment or where the treatment wasn't followed by recovery. Confirmation bias is the reason why psychics who claim that they can reach people can be successful. All it takes is to give a large number of ambiguous statements and the client will mainly focus on and remember those that are correct or can be interpreted as correct. Confirmation bias can occur even in science. Even scientists can be prone to focusing mainly on the evidence that confirms their hypothesis. This is mitigated by the insistence that hypotheses should be objectively testable by methods that can be used by other scientists, so errors and omissions can be discovered and pointed out. Politics is an area very prone to confirmation bias. With so many things happening around the world, so many factors interacting with each other and influencing each other in often unpredictable ways, it's not so hard to find some information that can be interpreted in a way that confirms what we think. For example, that this very good thing was a result of actions of a politician that we like, or this very bad thing was a result of actions of a politician that we dislike. Confirmation bias is a reason why it's not so often, or ever, that someone thinks, I'm gonna look for information that completely disagrees with me to see if I've missed something, or misinterpreted something, or if there is something that I don't know that can change my opinion. Confirmation bias appears when people think about the important attitudes that they are motivated to protect, but it can also appear anytime people think about something that they are indifferent about. All it takes is to have some initial hypothesis. Then, automatically, our mind tends to focus on finding information that would prove that this hypothesis is correct. That is just how our thinking works naturally, when we do not pay attention to how we think. One more thing is important here. Being right about something doesn't prevent confirmation bias. It's possible that we can be right about something not because we've thought it through, but because, for example, we've been initially exposed to the right information, and we can still be under influence of confirmation bias, despite focusing on the correct information, choosing the correct interpretation, and recalling the correct information.